Hello again! It's so nice to see you and today I have prepared something different for you. I have my standard old canvas here and I have covered it with a thin even coat of liquid clear this time. It will be the first time we will be using the clear together and we normally do paintings that have a lot of depth and a lot of layers and we gradually come towards the one that sees the painting but today I want something that is quite close to us and we can see a lot of details in the foreground so I thought we'd do a mountain scene with a mountain being close to us and a very nice small lake here some big trees and the regular stuff that we always do so let's start immediately with some Theta Blue on the Twins brush and we don't want a lot of sky today just a little bit of Theta Blue and let's come up here and you know it's very very important to have a thin even coat of liquid clear on the canvas because this will destroy your colors very very easily so only thin even coat is necessary and if you cannot see how much you have on the canvas just take a paper towel and remove any excess and by the time we do not have a black canvas here and you're not sure where you have and where you don't have liquid clear you can just see the painting shining the canvas shining underneath so in here I'm just dropping in some basic very basic crisscross strokes to make the sky and by the time we do not have liquid white tone the color is true in here you can see that I picked up a small amount of pale green but that's alright and it's true, it's a true color up here. But it's okay, you can come back with some pale blue and fix it. Maybe some light is playing through here. Okay, now very, very gently go across and remove the brush marks. And let's come down here. I want to have a nice lake, so let's go into some pale blue once again. And this time I want the pale green. Just load some color. And by the time we're close to the lake, we want more details. So just put some color on the brush here. And we want straight strokes here because we're painting still water. Okay. Just pull some paint here always start from the bottom because as you go gradually up the paint from the brush is reduced just throw some paint in it doesn't matter that much at that point okay nothing to worry about Just be very, very careful with the clear. This is what we're gonna practice today. We're gonna work with a true vibrancy of the colors. Okay, let's build a mountain. So I'm gonna use some black. This is ivory black, some Prussian blue, some Van Dyke brown, and some allergen crimson here. And as always, we pull the paint flat and cut off a small roll of paint and the edge of the knife. So let's have the mountain. Let's go up here. We want a big mountain. Let's come way up here. Just put in some peaks. And today I thought we'll try to bring the light from the left. Just a very very basic shape. This mountain is very close to us so we can see a lot of detail. That's why I haven't put any white on. Just something like this. Remove any excess as we always do. It's very important to remove the excess paint from here because the next layer will be applied easier 
and it will be easier for us to break the paint with a palette knife. Okay, let's take our brush and blend this. Just pull the paint. And always, always follow the angle of the mountain. Just pull the paint. And I want a big mountain, but if you want to do this with great depth as we always do, just do your own thing. I'm just trying to show you the way here today. And the paint here slides very, very easily by the time we have the clear on. And as always, we, we keep the bottom misty and the top very distinct. Okay. Fix this one a little bit. By the time you can move the paint here, you have nothing to worry about. So let's take, let's paint some snow here. I'm gonna take some pure titanium white. And we're gonna add some of the mountain color, but not much. A small amount of the mountain color. Pull this out very flat and leave it marbly and cut off a small roll of paint as we always do. So by the time the light's coming from the left, we have to change things a little bit. So let's come here and just very, very gently pull this in this direction. And as you can see, the paint is breaking as always. We just change the angle we do things here. And normally, it's very, very difficult for us right-handed people to do that. And I haven't done this in a while, so... I just want you to, I just want to show you this. It can be done, you know. Some more snow in here. And by adding the mountain color, we have lots of detail. That's what we are looking for here today. Some more paint up here. Just let it break like this. Can you see that I'm following the angle of the mountain? This is the most important thing you have to do today. Some more paint. And in here, we just do the same. Maybe give this pig some more highlights. And you just let it flow. Can you see? No pressure as always. We'll come at this one too. Very, very gently. Something like this. Let's make a shadow color. Let's have... Let's take some white. And I'm gonna add some Prussian blue and some Van Dyke brown for that. Maybe a little bit more blue. And we don't want much white because we're close here and we can see a lot of detail. And this will be our shadow color. Cut off our roll of paint and just sneak behind here. You, know, you can use the small edge of the knife like this. Just be very, very careful. Very gentle here. And another trick you can do, by the time we are right, I am ha right handed, you can use the knife on the other side. So you load the, the knife the other way, on the other edge. And let's come up here using no pressure at all, as always. And just let it break like this. It's something we have never done before, I thought it would be nice. And you can see that there are lots of shadows here. And you can always come back with your highlight color, the white and the mountain paint, the mountain color. And just add another peak here. Just let the colors blend a little bit. 
just like this. Make this a little bit more distinct. Alright. And return to our shadow color. And just bring all this together. Maybe. Maybe I want to fix this a little bit, a bit too much color here. But let the paint to blend on the canvas because lots of nice effects will happen. I'm gonna return to my shadow color now. And just you know you can leave this nice dark area here and start from here. Just like so. Very very gently. Not much rain. And we do not care about this area right now because we're going to have a big tree later on. Okay. Now we want a clean and dry two inch brass and going to miss this area here. Let's follow the angle of the mountain. Very, very important to follow the angle of the mountain here. And this here, we follow the other angle. And lift upwards, removing the top marks. And we have a nice mountain that is close to us now. Okay. Let's have some trees that are close to us. I'm gonna take the same mountain color here with some sub green. Just mix this thoroughly. I'm gonna add some of this shadow color because it has a little bit of white here and I want that in the time being. That's what I'm looking for. Just basic color for some faraway trees. But they're not that far away today. They're quite close but Still we can see all the details we want. So let's take a number 6 fan brush. Load it full of paint and let's come up here. Let's have our trees here, I hope you can see it. Just a lot of nice trees. Always remember to vary the shape of those trees. And always remember to fill in all your gaps in here. We want them to be very, very close to each other. So what we have to worry here is the shape and the height, nothing else. We don't want detail, we just tap downwards with a fan brush. You can also use the one inch brush, the two inch brush. Even the round brush works very nice for that. And by the time we're running out of paint at some point, you can see the variations of the trees and the colors and all these. And this gives us a very nice effect. Some trees might be coming in front of the mountain. Some more paint here. And maybe this this is a cliff here. It, it goes upwards at some point. Something like this. I know that at some point my hand here is bothering you from seeing what the brush is doing here. So I really hope you can see that we're just tapping downwards. Just fill in all your gaps. Okay. This is very simple and very easy. Let's miss the bottom of those. We're gonna take, we're gonna take the twins brush and just tap here. And now the liquid clear doesn't work the same way the liquid white works, but you 
you can still have some blending here, so there's gonna be a nice misty effect, a transparent effect here. That's very, very nice. Use a lot of pressure to that. It's very, very important. Only the bottom. Okay. And now just lift upwards and remove the top marks. And that's all you have to worry about. Okay. Let's return to our fan brush. Gonna darken the color a little bit, take some midnight black, some Prussian blue, and all these nice dark colors we have already. Just a little bit darker. And let's put another layer in here. I remember to save the misty area in between. Just tap. And always, always remember to change the color, darken it a little bit when you come forward. Just like that. probably one of the easiest things to do and I still think that's very very effective you don't have to worry about a lot of things just remember to load your brush as necessary you can see the nice mist in between if we are close to a forest or something And now that we're closer to the light source that comes from the right, even if you run out of paint, you can just let that happen because it will seem like lots of light is coming through the trees. Just like that. Reversing the brush here. And as you can see there are more details in here than here compared to the color. Just like that. Fill in your gaps. And return to your twins brush that you used to mist the previous layer and do the same here. a lot of pressure, it's very very important and it's also important to have a very nice strong easel you really need a strong easel for that ok lift this upwards and do the same thing ok let's come a little bit more closer here. I'm gonna collect this color here and make some more with my knife. It's just black, blue, and all these dark colors. Just mix this thoroughly. And today I thought we'd use the round brush for foliage. It would be very nice to use this brush and let's take and just have some color in here we just use the top corner I hope you can see it here and use quite a bit of pressure here okay let's decide about some basic shapes of trees and bushes You can see some details here. And we'll come back and just highlight all this. We want some basic shapes here. There's a nice tree in here. 
and it's very important to use to use some pressure while loading these graphs because it will help spread up the bristles and you will get lots of nice effects in here. And right now I'm not using that much pen because I'm gonna use this brush for another layer and darken it a little bit. Okay, I've got an idea. Let's use a small a small fan brush today. Let's load a bit of paint and that and have a couple of small evergreens that are there. So let's come up here. I've used a lot of paint for that. And now we want to push upwards, so just use the corner of the brush. And just push upwards. Right now everything is dark here, but when you put the highlights on, everything will come to life. So don't worry about it now. Just push upwards. Using just the corner and using more and more of the brush and more and more pressure as you go downwards. Let's have another one. Let's have a smaller one here. But you can have as many trees as you want in your world. Let's go to the other side too. Let's have a bigger one in here. You can also use the number 6 fan brush if you want, but right now I want them a bit smaller than usual. That's why I'm using the number 3. And giving him some company here. Something like this. Okay, now. Let's paint some trunks, but I don't want them very distinct. Just take some of your white, a little bit of white, and a little bit of Van Dyke brown for that, but not much paint. And let's come here and just pull in some trunks. Something like this. Okay. I'm gonna use the same brush with just a drop of paint in a very very small amount in order for my highlights to stick. And I'm using the same brush and by the time we have dark color in here I'm gonna have a green color. Took some soft green too. And the paint in here is only to make the highlight color stick. So let's come up here, and by the time we have light from the left, we want more highlights on the left. Always remember where your light source is. Do the same thing here. And let's go in here to very very easy to do and these are quite dark always leave the river greens dark okay let's put the highlights on these trees I'm gonna take another round brush here top in some paint I'm gonna play through the colors here I'm gonna take some sub green too load quite a bit of paint here Let's also use a little amount of paint thinner. Blend through the yellows. And only use only use the corner of the brush. So let's come up here and this is where we separate the dark areas. So as you can see we have lots of dark, lots of different layers already. lay through your colors and we're only painting one bush at a time it's very very important and if your paint won't stick just add 
a listless amount of time here and there. As you can see, this brush works fantastically. Another bit of highlight here. So always remember to save some dark areas in between those. Lots of nice bushing trees here. Let's take some bright red for that. Can you see the difference? This really really breaks the scenery. That's what I was looking for. Return to green. And really this brush gives us a lot of detail. I highly recommend you get one. And in here our touch is very very gentle. We just caress the canvas with the top corner. Okay. Let's take a small knife and scratch in some trunks in here. Just use the corner, the clean corner in here. As you can see, everything comes to life. And always prefer the dark areas to do that. So let's make another layer here. I'm gonna return to my dark color. That's why I have two brushes. I always recommend you have two brushes of its, of its type of brush. So let's darken the color and come in here and build another layer. This pushes the other bushes back and separates things a little bit. Some more paint here. Just like that. And you can also come above some of these and give a little bit of interest. We know they are back there, they are just hiding behind the taller ones in the foreground. Let's do the same in here, wherever you have a place you might not like, you can just come in here. So what I've done here is actually that I've hidden two bushes behind this one. I have saved this one. so. You can still see them, you know they are there. Okay. And you know, I want to have some land here. Let's take the twins brush that is already dirty and add a little bit of paint here, a little bit of dark color. And let's decide the lay of the land. Let's just up in some land. Always remember to load the brush by tapping. And this adds another layer, another plane in the painting. We need something to hold of these. And this is also where you decide the lay of the land. It's very, very important. I want a little bit of lake here. So let's pull in some color and come in here and try to make sort of roundish sort of roundish piece of land there something like this and remember to have nice dark areas in the foreground I have a very disturbing hair here I'm going to take my knife very carefully and remove it because I'm, my brush is very shading today. Okay. Something like this. And you can also take, let's take a clean twin brush here and just reflect some of this land in the water. Just pull down whatever you don't want. But always remember to pull straight down, this is most important. Okay. Now very very gently go across. 
and we have a very nice water effect. Let's return to the round brush with a highlight color on and just tap in the color and come up here and very very gently tap in some highlights using only the very corner. Let's get some Indian yellow in here. Always, always do one bush at a time. Let's build this one here, the big one. And have the small ones in here. You can have as many as you want. And you have problem that if you have any problems making your paint stick, just add a little, little amount of paint in there for that. Okay. Always leave dark areas in between. And by the time, as I said in the start, we have not a lot of depth. As you can see, we are very, very close. So it doesn't matter. We do not have lots of dark areas. For instance, in here, there is not a big gap or in here. But as you can see this is still realistic because when you are that close you can see more details. Okay. Scratching some sticks here and there. Only using the clean knife. And I'm going through each bush because I want to see the trunks of this. And in a matter of seconds we have given each bush its private sticks to hold them. So let's return, let's take this dirty brush. I'm gonna go into some yellow. Let's paint the grass areas here. I'm gonna take some sub green. And this is where you push. Pull the paint out, you need a lot of paint for that and just push. We want a very nice ridge of paint here. Just push like this. Okay? And let's come up here and just touch a very very nice area of grass here. And leave a little bit of dark in between to separate the layers. Do the same thing here. And this is where we stop in here because we have water underneath. But let's come to the closer ones. Okay, let's build something to hold on this. Gonna go into some Van Dyke Brown. Pull this out and take a roll of paint and just go in here and as we always do, let's put some land we need something to hold all this and we have a roundish lake, so make sure you give your land the necessary shape and I'm gonna go into some white that has the mountain color on Take some dark sienna, and this will be the highlight for this. So let's come here and just caress the canvas like this. Make the paint to break and give some highlights on the stones here. I'm gonna go into some liquid white, a small amount of liquid white here, spread it very, very flat and just cut across to have a water line here. So just go right in under the stones and just scratch in some water lines. Just use a lot of pressure for that.
and you can have some ripples in here if you want. Okay. I'm gonna return with a big brush here. Let's take some more paint, and especially on the edge here, and bring all this together. So let's come above this and bring the land the grass and the dirt here together but be very very careful and very very gentle okay just touch gently you can use a one inch brush if you want but I have this dirty here so I don't have to worry about something different and I think it's also great practice to do that, to sneak with a big brush like this in small areas. And as you can see, everything is fine now. So let's come forward. I want to have a very, very big tree here. So I'm gonna go into my dark color again, my black, Prussian blue, and all the other colors here just tap in some colors and I'm gonna go up here and just fill this in just fill this in give it some character and this is gonna add a lot of interest in that right now because we're gonna see a lot of details in this tree here. You know, you might cover some of your things in here, but it doesn't matter because you know how to paint them. So we can go a little bit in front of this tree and save it. Just fill this in. We want a lot of dark in here. Just tap in. Always remember, always remember to tap in a basic shape and then come in with highlights. And whatever you don't like, you can cover up, you know. It's very, very easy. In here I want to have a huge reflection. And you know, I like doing things that are going outside the canvas. For instance, we will not be able to see the whole reflection because we are that close that the picture we have painted can't have the reflection inside. I think it's, it's interesting to do something like this. Okay. I'm gonna take the brush that I made the reflections with and just pull down and very very gently go across and now I have given some character I do not have a straight line here just something like this like the one place here you know it's very nice to have different shapes for making the ground for instance I could have gone in here just pulling down straight but it wouldn't be that nice so I have just gun here that means that I pull closer to me right now in here compared to this part of the painting okay and you can do this as many times as you want to get it very very soft so let's return to the round brush with a highlight color and I want a lot of detail here play through the yellows and let's decide about the shape so let's start from here and just put in some very nice leaves and you know I want more dark in the background compared to the leaves that are hanging in front because there is more light in here You can have some in here if you want. I'm 
very very nice. I hope you find this painting interesting and give you a lot of inspiration. And I also think that the round brush is an excellent, excellent piece of equipment that I highly recommend you use. And you can do all sorts of things with this. You can also paint evergreens if you want by bringing them to a chisel edge. It's quite fascinating. Let's have a nice bush here. Just fill this in nicely. And always remember to be gentle while painting this. And in here I want more dark areas. Let's paint. Okay, so let's reflect this. Let's go like this in here with some paint. And you can have some of the other bushes in here too. Just throw some in. And now take your other brush that you made the reflections with and be very, very gentle here. So just pull very, very gently and then go across. But it's very, very important to have a very delicate touch for that. As you can see, these are very, very gently touched. And by the time we have the clear on, we can move the paint. That's what we were looking for. And let's take some more of the Van Dyke Brown here and make a nice piece of land. Highlight this. And it's always the same thing, just drop in the waterline. Make sure it's straight as possible. Okay, scratching some sticks and twigs in these bushes. And also come back with your round brush, some paint, and bring this together. It's the same thing we did earlier. Just bring in some leaves on the stones here. Okay, and to fill in this gap, just take, you can see how few, how less paint I have here, and just fill in this in with some dark paint. Just some very, very basic shapes here. It's gonna add some interest, push some of these things back, but we can still see a lot of detail. That's the best thing of all. So in here I have a little bit of a mess because I have touched with my brush the waterline that was very distinct. So if you are worrying about this, you can just take your knife and scrape this off, as you can see, and I'm gonna return with some dark paint and rebuild this. Just use some paint and you have covered this in a heartbeat. So there's actually nothing to worry about. And I'm gonna highlight all these. Go through my yellows and the greens, the bright red. Just highlight each one individually. And give a little shape to those. I want them a bit roundish here. Not make them stand up. Just, they might probably looking the other way there. And as you can see there are fine details from the round brush. It's very important to use natural bristle brushes of our technique. And we just fill this in with some leaves, scratching our trunks here. 
And if, if you want, you can also use, you can also paint a big tree in here, but I don't want that at the moment. And I think with that, we have a completed painting. We did something different today. We have tried to paint the highlights in the mountain from the left and then add some very nice foliage in our painting. So I really hope you enjoyed it. I'm looking forward to seeing your work. So until next time, I'd like to wish you happy painting and take care.